So, so what, I was, what, I was, what I plan to do is to say a few words, but I, I really want to stimulate some conversation. So I'd love this to be interactive. There's a lot of wisdom in this audience. There's a lot of experience. A lot of you are doing all this stuff. H- how many doctors are in the audience? How many, so there, how many of you are non, or non-doctors? Put up your hands. Wow, there are quite a few of you. So how many of the non-doctors are patients? <laughs> So you're professional people, because there, there's some people here who are not professionally involved with treating people. So you all treat people. No, some of you don't. So you, you don't. Okay. So, so look, I'm going to be talking about female hormones. And, and then let's, let's talk a bit about it in a conversation. So ask, if, you ever, if you want to ask me questions at any stage, please go. Just put up your hand and interrupt. So when, when someone comes to see me and they present to me with certain symptoms... I need, to ask, I need to ask myself, why are they getting those symptoms? And I see a lot of people who are walking through my door complaining of fatigue, and they're moody, and they're irritable, and they can't remember very well, and some women are losing hair, because we're talking about women. So they've got all those things happening. And I need to work out why. You always have to ask the question, why? Now, it's very, very simple. If you're looking at hormones, and you want to know... Beautiful. Can you hear me? Is this alright? You can hear me? Yes, yes. So when someone comes and sees you and they have these presenting complaints and you want to work out why and you're looking at their hormones and you, ask, you want to ask yourself why are their hormones not working? Why are their hormones not working? So it's very, very simple. Very, very simple. All you have to do is ask yourself, are they producing enough hormones? And if they are producing enough hormones, is something getting in the way of the hormone activity? Because often you'll find you'll measure a patient's hormones, and I do this a lot, and you can do it by a blood test or a saliva test. I use a lot of saliva testing. I find it kind of a bit more useful than blood testing. So I, used, I do a saliva test, and I found that a woman is producing reasonable amounts of estrogen. Estrogen. Just look at estrogen. And, but she's fatigued, and she's moody, and she's tired and depressed. All symptoms of estrogen deficiency. If you believe Terry Hertog's book. And Terry Hertog and, and myself, and I'm only promoting him because he's somewhere in Belgium promoting me right now, is that Terry Hertog's got a book of explaining, going through all these symptoms and signs of hormone deficiency. What's Terry's book called, Greg? The Hormone Something Book? Hormone the Hormone Handbook. It's a yellow book. It only costs $350, which is about $325 more than my book. <laughs> and so, but it, God, I, I should have charged so much for my book. So, so, and it's a good book. So if, if they're producing reasonable amounts of estrogen, all the three estrogens, E1, E2, E3, on a saliva test, and yet they're getting moody, irritable, and depressed and tired, you have to ask yourself why. Because estrogen is a big energizer. Estrogen stimulates the Krebs cycle. Estrogen helps glucose get into your cells like insulin does. Estrogen stimulates fatty acid oxidation. So estrogen energizes you. It's an energizing hormone. It does much more for you than testosterone does for men. In fact, we are very stupid. Men are very stupid. What we do is we use testosterone, well, clever maybe, we use testosterone to make estrogen. And, a lot, and t- testosterone is really a pro-hormone. A lot of the effects that happen from testosterone in men is care of the con- conversion of testosterone to estrogen, which is kind of interesting because we think that the prostate gets affected in an adverse way by estrogen. We're telling ourselves estrogen makes the prostate g- get cancer, possibly. So you need to work out why the estrogen is not working. Now, when estrogen docks on your cells, and it works like insulin does to get glucose into your cells, because what estrogen does, it docks on the receptor, stimulates the PI3 kinase pathway, which is how insulin works. And this PI3 kinase pathway then facilitates the, the glucose receptors, this glucose mechanism to get glucose into your cells. So estrogen works exactly the same way as insulin does. Exactly the same way to get glucose into your cells and you use glucose for energy. So if estrogen is not working, you need to ask yourself why. 
Now, in order for this PI3 kinase pathway to work and to get glucose into your cells, you need energy. Things don't happen without energy. And for energy, you need the Krebs cycle. And as I showed you next door, for the Krebs cycle to work, you need nutrients. So you need B vitamins, you need magnesium, you need manganese, you need copper, you need iron, you need zinc. You need all those nutrients. And you will find, when you assess those nutrients in your patients, a lot of your patients will have nutrient deficiencies. A lot of them. Deficiencies of copper, very common. Deficiencies of zinc, even more common. De deficiencies of manganese, very common. Magnesium, B vitamins. All you have to look at is a patient's tongue. Get your patients to stick out their tongue, which you do with all your patients, I'm sure. And if you see their tongue as a strawberry red tip, strawberry tongue, that means B vitamin deficiency, commonly vitamin B3. And as you know from the history, there are three Ds that go with B, vitamin B3 deficiency. Three Bs. Yes, yeah, the three Ds, sorry. Diarrhea is one of them. What are the others? Dementia. Dementia, what's the other one? Well, not death, not quite. That's not a symptom. Yeah. So if they've got diarrhea, dermatitis, and dementia, which a lot of people have got, they'll tell you I'm pretty stupid, I've got dementia, I've got dermatitis, and I'm running to the toilet the whole day long. Then you go, ah, oh, you've got the three Ds. Stick out your tongue, please. They'll stick out their tongue, you'll see the strawberry red tongue, and you'll find they've got a vitamin B3 deficiency. Okay? Very, very simple. All you have to do is examine and ask them questions. So if they've, if they've got deficiencies of these nutrients, estrogen is not going to work. See? So oftentimes you go to a doctor and you get estrogen, or the doctor will say, your estrogen is a little bit low, I'll give you estrogen, and then that doesn't work, and then you get more estrogen. And that's when you start getting, running into problems. Because estrogen can be pro-inflammatory and anti-inflammatory. Every hormone, every nutrient has, has an opposite effect. So zinc can be pro-apoptotic and anti-apoptotic. Zinc can be an antioxidant and a pro-oxidant. Every single thing you look at has opposites. Opposites. That's what happens. So if you use the wrong dosage of zinc, estrogen, or the wrong delivery system of estrogen, oftentimes people get given oral estrogen. That increases inflammation. You might run into problems. Now, once you've optimized your nutrients, and you really need to do this. Very, very important to optimize your nutrients. And besides the Krebs cycle, you have to look at the methylation cycle. Very, very important methylation. Because with methylation, you make DNA, healthy DNA. With methylation, you make neurotransmitters. And with methylation, you detoxify hormones. So if your methylation system is not working, you're going to get moody, you're going to get irritable, you're not going to make healthy DNA, and you're going to run into problems. So you have to optimize methylation. And one of the ways to work that out is to simply measure homocysteine. And if your homocysteine is high, that's not good. And if your homocysteine is low, that's not good. Oftentimes you hear doctors say, your homocysteine is low, that's really good, because your homocysteine is not going to harm you. No. Whatever result you get from back from your lab test is telling you something about that patient. It's information. It's just a matter of how you use that information intelligently. It's very, very important to use it. It's very, very easy to say, your hormones are low, that's what your blood tests show, I'm going to give you hormones. But you have to ask yourself, why is this patient's hormones low? There's this whole argument around anti-aging, that as we get older, our body produces less hormones. And some say that's why we age. Others say our bodies produce less hormones to protect us against cancer. Our bodies aren't that stupid. Yep. 